Joining us now, uh, Sarat Sethi, managing partner at Douglas C. Lane and Associates and a CNBC contributor, and David Bonson, chief investment officer of the uh, Bonson Group. David, I referenced you earlier uh, in uh, some of the, our uh, discussions about Quiddily and uh, Italy and the euro. And it, it's interesting because I, I happen to agree with you, but you said this isn't probably going to be it and it'll probably be over at some point. We won't be talking about Italy, but... The euro is doomed long term. Um, I stand by both of those statements. We've been saying them for a while. I guess I didn't think uh, when I wrote my article on, on Wednesday that we would kind of make back most of Tuesday's drop in a day. But you go back through the three or four iterations of Greece and obviously the, the Brexit issue and uh, Cyprus. The, the, these disruptions coming out of Europe are guaranteed to continue coming. Um, from a trader standpoint, it must be very inconvenient. They, they keep putting silly little ballots on and calling little short-term you know, voter referendums and things Structurally, it's absolutely unsustainable, and I think that's a good thing long term, probably very painful, intermediate for European investors, and then in the short term, I think the whole thing's silly, and the way in which it gets manifested in U.S. financials it strikes me as the most incredible um, uh, fighting 2008 battles I've seen. Like six degrees of separation between what's happening there and, and doing something here. Yes, yeah, so what it, it does to the tenure, though. I mean, here, here we are. Well, and that, and that would be a benefit, right? One of the things I talked about last time I was on with you is that asset allocation wasn't working, that stocks and bonds were not diversifying one another. Well, they sure were this week when the tenure drops from 300 to 275. All of a sudden, you get this benefit of bonds that flight to safety into treasuries. It's hysterical how quick quickly alleged inflation risk and interest rate risk drops when people are worried about some global disruption. Fundamentally, that safe haven of U.S. Treasuries is going nowhere. So, Rod, I, I don't think that's uh, entirely different from what you think. We'll get beyond this. Stocks are still the place to be. Yeah, and I think you're absolutely right. You look at Brexit, it was like a three-day event. You look at all this thing that happens in Europe, and as an investor, what's going to happen more and more is that the equity is going to shift more to a U.S. focus because we have a lot less uh, uncertainty over here and people will pull money into the companies that we want to own here let them allocate money overseas and to your point this is opportunity I mean financials go down four percent in one day when nothing fundamentally happened our growth rates didn't really change but it was more of a let's just say more allocation came in and people had to sell and I think that's where you get the opportunity in the long term so I mean it you wouldn't say that it's a good thing that problems in Europe cause rates to stay down lower here no, no. no. I, I think if you have rates is that too, a silver lining though that, that uh in the short term yes but we're we, tethered to, to european rates though it's hard to get above three percent and i think you know you guys were talking about that before because you have these technical factors right now that we've never ever seen and we haven't really even seen all this money that came into the market so but fundamentally speaking the financials i think are the way to go because what's going to drive them is going to be earnings now and then once people see that i think you're going to get some of the stocks to expand but we do need rates to go up. But in the short term, these blips are going to cause the tenure to come down, and it's going to cause a lot of disruption, at least in the short term. All right, so mid-cap, big-cap, uh, U.S. equities, domestic, what, they're foreign. What, what so, they're so, right. so where we'd like to be is small-cap and mid-cap, but not passive, not the full index. You have to buy the stuff that's actually benefiting from corporate tax reform. So that, therefore, means that the companies are making money. So we like small-cap, where there is still that, I think, unpriced benefit from tax reform. Uh, we like emerging markets from a growth standpoint, and then in terms of with large cap, uh, we're, we're playing for the value transition. We think that dividend growth is going to be the better place to be. You've got the telecoms have gotten killed. There's some value out there to buy. You're, you're a Trojan? Die hard. You're big, big Trojan. Right um, on. Do you think Sam Dar Darnold's going to help the Jets? Or? I, I think the kid's a winner, and I think that uh, New York is going to be very happy. other guy, Sanchez? You... Yeah, he won a couple games for him. No, he, he, he like remember the foot, the I butt was, fumble. I mean, that, that was. I do, huh? I do remember it. Darnold will not do that. How's oh, okay. that? He's, big, he's tall. All right, David. Thank you, Sarah. I don't know where you went to school. Where you go to school? I went to Lehigh. <laughs> Good place. All right, coming up, the author.